Hey internet, welcome back. Today I'm going to be setting up my October monthly spread in my bullet journal. So I know October for most people is all about fall, autumn, Halloween, etc, etc. And that's only partially true if you live in the southern hemisphere. We do celebrate Halloween kind of in Australia, but it's actually spring right now. So I decided to try something different and go for a design that I felt complemented my situation a little bit better rather than all the leaves and the autumn colours and thought, bubble tea, why not? I love it, I am completely addicted to it, and it's just such a huge part of my life. As weird as that may sound, I know, it's a beverage we're talking about here, but I mean, I'm addicted. So anyways, in Australia, we mostly call it bubble tea, although I hear people from the States often refer to it as boba. I think in Chinese it's boba naicha, so I guess it's kind of closer to the way the Americans describe it, but for those of you who don't know, Bubble tea is an amazing Taiwanese tea-based drink. Typically, it's milk-based and it's served with tapioca pulse, but you can get it in so many different varieties with so many different toppings now. It's amazing, and I urge you to give it a shot if you haven't already. Because there's so many different variances, I feel like you will definitely find something you love. So for this spread, I decided to go with my true and tried watercolor paints, and I'm half considering switching it up next month. I'm not really sure yet. I was thinking of using textures or pencils instead, but I don't know, I always default back to watercolors just because I find it easier to use. I love using them. They're just such a fun medium to paint with. I think the biggest issue I have right now with my watercolors is trying to understand the level of water I should be using because I think I use way too much water and it tends to make my pages crinkle a lot. Whereas if I go for a bit of a drier feel, I think I'd be able to get a similar effect without the crinkliness in the pages because now when I close my bullet journal, I have pages that are really wrinkly and it just doesn't look very nice. So not the biggest deal, but I think it mostly comes down to me just practicing and kind of getting used to it a bit more. So yeah. <laughs> So the last two months I've been structuring my weekly spreads in such a way to record where my time goes each day, but it meant that my weekly spreads were very restrictive in how they could look, like I always had to have a way where I could like track the time for each day, and I really didn't like that because it meant that I couldn't try new spreads and I was pretty much stuck in the same template for like two months. So I decided to pull up Timekeeper and just dedicate a single page to it where I could track all my time. And it just meant that now my weekly spreads for October are going to hopefully be a lot more creative. So I'm really excited for that. So the next page is actually inspired by a bunch of bullet journalers on Instagram. One of my all time favorite bullet journalers is Amanda Lee, whom I feel like everyone would know her. She is one of my favorite bullet journal YouTubers ever. So talented and creative. So what a lot of these people have done is create these amazing works of art which need to be filled out color wise. And they do that based on their mood throughout the month. So maybe they'll have like red for angry, or blue for sad or something like that and they'll just eventually populate it and then by the end of the month you have this beautiful piece of art. So this is obviously my first attempt at it and I don't think I got the sizing estimates quite right in my head. The way I pictured it in my head is that I wanted the pearls to be a lot larger but they ended up only taking up like a third of the cup which is probably more realistic of what an actual bubble cup is like but I just wanted something that filled the page a little bit more so that's just something I'm going to keep working on for next month. In the past, a lot of my mood trackers would allow me to track multiple moods a day so I could feel angry and sad and happy all in the one day, which is quite typical for me. But this particular mood tracker only allows you to track one key emotion for each day, which I'm not really sure how that's going to go down for me. Okay, so next page. This is be my sleep tracker for the month, and I'm going to be taking on a very similar layout to my time tracker. It's actually almost identical. You've got your days and your dates on the side, and then on the top I've mapped out the hours. And each day I'm just going to draw a bar that represents how many hours I've slept for that night. So I actually got this particular layout idea from Adagio Studies from Instagram, except she used this layout to track how many hours of piano practice she's done, which actually really took me back because when I was in high school, I was still doing my piano lessons and everything, and I remember having to track how many hours I practiced a day. Then we move on to the tried and true habit tracker. Nothing major changed this month. I did remove a couple habits that I wasn't really using, such as the quotes and the lists. 
I just never got around to filling those out. So for quotes, what I wanted to do is try and document a brand new quote each day and then lists. I was looking for a way to create like inspirational lists to keep myself motivated. I just never got around to it. So I decided I would just move it out and I decided to add working out back into my tracker because the weather's warming up now and I'm like fully into meal prepping. So I feel like my next step to improve my health is going to be trying to incorporate a little bit more exercise into my daily routine. Who knows, every time I try to track it, I feel like I bomb and I don't do well. And then when I stop tracking it, I actually do work out. So I don't know, it's weird. And finally, we have the monthly spread. I decided to keep this view pretty simple. I guess I wanted to focus more on the functionality of things since everything else is a little bit more creative than usual. But I'm thinking I might want to play with the design a little bit more next month. I feel like because my box size is a 6x6, it doesn't give me much room to do much else with the layout. Whereas I've seen other bullet journalers go down to like 5x5. Five five. I don't know. I still like the big boxes because it allows me to add a lot of detail to my monthly spread so that by the end of the month it's fully filled out. And so that's pretty much my entire monthly setup for October. I decided not to feature a weekly spread this time just because I had a couple extra pages this month and I didn't want the video to be too long. But let me know what you guys think. Do you prefer the videos to be longer, shorter? I'm always curious to know what you guys think. So thank you so much for watching. This is Selena reporting from my room. Back to you internet.